me the dream. We have a dream, that's why we do everything to reach that dream. Our text for the semesters, CEW talks about one of the most important ingredients of our dream, and that is discipline. And discipline means to provide instruction with the intent of forming proper habits of behavior or providing guidance for responsible living or of rearing and guiding a child toward maturity. It is a broad term that signifies whatever parents and teachers do to correct, cultivate, and educate children in order to help them develop and mature as they ought. That is what discipline means. Now let's go back to the verses that we read just this afternoon and then let's continue as I proceed to share with you some of the things that I prepared for you this afternoon. Let's read Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11. It says here, No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Proverbs 25, 28 says, Like a city whose walls are broken down is a man who lacks self-control. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this opportunity to look into your word and get instruction so that we can pursue and continue to reach that dream that you gave us. Be in our midst this afternoon, Father, and speak through me. Hide me beneath the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. So Hebrews chapter 12, verse 11 begins with the word what? In the New International Version, it says, no. It begins with the word no. In the English standard, by the way, it doesn't say there that some discipline is unpleasant. It says there no discipline is pleasant. In the English standard version, it says there all discipline, tanan. All discipline is unpleasant at the time. And so this leads us to the first thing I want you to take home this afternoon. And that is the fact, as what Pastor Chris has mentioned, that there is a certain discomfort in discipline. So there is the discomfort of discipline. Why is discipline very, very uncomfortable? Okay, everybody. I'll permit you to slide into your most comfortable position. Sige, tungtong ang tiil. Walang ubahay sa patos, please. <laughs> slide into your most comfortable position. Are you comfortable? Yeah? House mode. You know what? Do you like it? Yes, yes. I don't like it. I don't like it. Why? Because if you sit that way, you will fall asleep. And you will not mind this 150-pound woman. Okay, siga, 164. 164-pound woman standing in front of you. Why? Because you're too comfortable. Now, everybody, I'm a teacher, so sit straight. Oh, very good. Sit straight, come on. Back, straightened up, feet on the floor. Stay that way. Now that's uncomfortable, right? Very uncomfortable. But you see, a certain discomfort, I learned this in a semi, uh, training recently, a certain discomfort will help you learn. A certain discomfort will help you learn. So I want you to be very uncomfortable right now. <laughs> now, why is it that discipline is very uncomfortable? First thing, discipline involves training. Everybody say training. training. It involves training. That is why it's very uncomfortable. You know, sino din mga athletes? Sino ka basketball? Wow, basketball player, varsity. You have not just, you did not just pick up a basketball 
and then started shooting three points, right? Wow, ikaw nagidya eh, no? What did you do? You trained for it. You trained for it. You don't just become an overnight sensation without training for it. Because you will never really be good. You may have the talent, but you'll never really be good at it if you don't train. One of my favorite authors, Malcolm Gladwell, wrote in the book, The Outliers. The title of the book is Outliers. And if you have the chance, go read Outliers. It's very helpful. You can learn a lot from it. And he talks about the 10,000 hour rule. Okay? 10,000 hour, what's a 10,000 hour rule? It means that if you have, or if you're good at something, you do it 10,000 times, 10,000 hours. Become a world class master at it. Ay, so pula palang ka hours, ang imuna spend sa pagkanta. Pula palang ka out, then you feel, wow, ako nagidya. The voice, CPU. So if you spend 10,000 hours on Facebook, ikaw nagidya ang Facebooker, yeah, world class level. See, you spend 10,000 hours to be good at something. For example, he talks of Bill Gates, who started tinkering with the computers at 16. And he would go to the computer of the university, even at 3 a.m., just to work, because that's the only time he can work. That's the only time it's vacant. Until he became the man that he was. He had Microsoft. And then he talks also of the Beatles. Who have you heard the Beatles? No, of the Beatles at least. Wow. You know, they started as a band in 1967. Sorry, 1957. But they were not very famous. What did they do? In Hamburg, Germany, in Europe, they played each night in a very obscure pagalpalun pub, club. They'd, they'd play there every night, seven nights a week, and they would play at least about eight hours in a day, including rehearsals. They do that every single day, sing the same songs, play the same things, say the same spiels probably. But you know, it was only until 1964 that they, came, they became big in the U.S. That's seven years after they were formed as a band. And when they were asked, they were touring around the world and they were asked, why do you have so much energy when, when you're on stage? Why can you sustain so many concerts, concert after concert each night? They'd say, we had hours and hours of doing the same thing in a small stage. And that has prepared us for this one. Training is very important. Without training, you'll never be good at something. You know, training is doing the same thing over and over again. Why do your, why do your professors give you exams? Why? Feel lang nila. And they, why? Because they want you to master, they want to check if you've mastered something, right? And so when you make a mistake, you do it all over again. You do it all over again. It's very, very uncomfortable to train. Who of you goes to the gym? Well, pa simple lang. Natural. Natural lang muscles. When ka gym, ganyan yun. Sino ka gym? Sige na. Wala ta, ano ha? Wow, very good. Diba? You don't go to the gym one day. Gabi na nga, ano-ano mo. And then you wake up, may abs ka na dayon. Magic. Di na nga gym, kay makadto ko to. Because it takes training for you to get abs, right? Also, if you go to the gym, I've been to a gym a few times, but not every day. If you notice, those people bala who go to the gym, Mario, there are different kinds of people at the gym, but there's one kind of people who go to the gym and sila niya mga super formada. 
di ba? Nike, Adidas, tanan na lang. Under Armour. They go step on a treadmill, and then what do they do? Selfie. Sweating out. Sweating out, pero why ka sweat? Why? Because they're just there, but they're not really training for it, right? And so, five months na kagajim, wa ay gapun ka nagani wang. Why? Because you did not train for it. But look at those who are really serious about it. How do they look? How do they look? Diba? Kapoy. Why? They don't care how they look as long as they do what they do to get their dream. To get to a destination. Diba? See? Training really looks ugly sometimes. Training doesn't look very good. But you do it because you have a dream. You have a destination. You have an ambition. Discipline is very uncomfortable because it involves training. The second thing is this. Discipline is very uncomfortable because it involves leaving. Aww. Bayaay naman. Bisan diin may bayaay gidya. Ayoko na. Discipline involves leaving some things behind. Have you had ever gone to an airport and nag over baggage ka mo? Excess baggage? Ano ni man? 200 per kilo sa Cebu Pacific. Tama? Ah. Oh. Painful. And so you open your suitcase, you have to decide. A very painful decision between the toothbrush and the scarf that he gave you. Oh, Lord, give me a sign. Anong ipilin ko? Ang toothbrush ako ng scarf. Bahala na hindi ko ka toothbrush lima kadlaw. Basta ang scarf, you are a good boy. You know what? There are things we bring on to the journey that are not necessary. And you have to learn to leave them behind. You have pasts, cruel pasts. Maybe an unfair thing was done to you and you keep on tagging it along in the journey. There's your dream right there and you say, Kay mansang una ginamo ko ni ho, mansang una gin cheat ko, mansang una gin saktan gid ko ya. If you keep on tagging along your excess baggage, you'll never get to the destination fast. So you have to learn how to leave things behind. It could be an ha a habit, it could be an addiction, it could be something you cannot really let go of. You gotta do something about it if you want to get that dream. You know, the discipline of leaving also reminds me of one character in the Bible by the name of Joseph. Do you know Joseph? Remember him? Hindi Joseph, nga classmate niyo, ah. You know Joseph and Potiphar's wife. It is not getting you to your destination. Learn to leave. That's the discipline. Right? That's the discipline. That's why in Proverbs here, it says in our verse that whoever is a person who doesn't have self-control, discipline, gid ko ya, ma'am, gindilit ko na ya. So you study, you study for an exam, next day, nag-inom ka pa sa stadyen, para lang ma, ano kiti mo nga, kaalam. And then the next day you take the exams, the day after, the exam papers were given back to you and you were confident you did it right. When you saw the papers, oh no. Two mistakes. Nga lang two mistakes pa, Kuya Man. Yawan ako toon. Buari, Gidus. Natungtuman ko ginisa, natungtuman ko ginisa. 
Di ba? And you hate yourself for having two mistakes. Sino nga muna? Wow. And then there's another kind of people who don't study. Mm, ay, tamo na ka-relate. <laughs> they don't study. They open the Facebook page. Three minutes na lang ah. Uy, ala, ano ni nga video? Ay, ala, si Kwan Hong. Ay, dali lang git. Ano? Ay, ba? Naglapot ka na sa friend of a friend of a friend of a friend. And then, pagkatanaw mo sa bintana, talk to Gaok. Ay, aga na. And so you take the exam, confidently beautiful, without a brain. <laughs> take the exam, and you pray to God, Lord Jesus, all the heavens open up your grace for me today. Sobra ka pa sa pastor mo, mga muyo. So that you will have the wisdom to answer your exam. But you didn't study. So, God gave you the grace anyway. You answered, Bida ah, Arya skip, ah, bida ah. Ay, naging krusan mo, pantis mo ipas. Ma'am, para wala, ay. Pagkagwa sa exam, pagkagwa sa classroom, pagkasmate mo, sorry, ay, ang mong answer po sa number three, ang kwan ba na ang equation to blo? The next day, the exam papers were given out. Out of a hundred, you only had ten mistakes. Yes! Ten mistakes lang ko! Diba? What's the difference between these two people? One who studied hated it that she had two mistakes. This person did not study. I think you ten mistakes lang ko. What does it teach us? What does this imply? You know what, guys? It's harder to accept corrections when you know you've done a good job. Agree? It's harder, athletes, to accept corrections from your coach when you know you're good at it. When your coach calls you, Dalib na, Nain? Okay, coach, ah. Amogi niya, coach. Kapila ko na niya, coach, brown. When your parents call you and say, wait a minute, come here. Ma, 19 na ko bala. Gulang na ko bala, 19. We don't like, would like to accept corrections because we feel like we're good at it. More so if God corrects us, sends us discipline, and we say, Lord, you know I've been a good kid. I pray every day. I attend CEW. Nagin kuwa mo siya sa akun. We don't like corrections when we feel like we've been good. We've been doing things right. We don't like corrections at all. But you see, accepting corrections is very necessary when you want to achieve your God-given destination. When you want to be where God wants you to be. God sometimes stops us on our tracks. And like a coach, he calls a timeout, right? He calls a timeout. You know, I, I, I have been a fan of Tim Cohn. Who of you watch here the games? What, you don't watch the games, PBA? Wow, ka mga studios, mga gusta di lang git kamuya? <laughs> wow, amazing! You know, Tim Cohn is a very fired up coach. And you would see when he calls out his uh, player. But he rallied his team to win the first championship after eight years. That's what a coach does. And God sometimes, like a coach, calls a timeout and says, the, the delight of right living. The delight of right living. What does this mean? Discipline produces righteousness. 
there's a righteousness that is produced in you. It's no longer a struggle to be good. Why? Because you have been doing that already. It's no longer a struggle to say no because you have been doing that already. Let's take for example, have you, have you watched the weightlifting ano, games? Wow, weightlifting fans? Okay. Weightlifting has two categories, right? One is... One is the clean and jerk, where you lift the barbell in two motions. So you lift it, and then put it on your shoulders, and then thrust it up. Okay? Sino sa inyong weightlifting? Wow. But there's another one. There's a snatch. What does a snatch do? From the floor, you thrust it up in one motion. And you know what? Remember Heidi Lynn Diaz? She is the Olympian with a silver medal from the Philippines who won just last year. She's only 59 kilos. Okay? 59 kilos. She lifted in a snatch, okay, an 88 kilo barbell. That's 1.66 times her weight. And she lifted it in a snatch. Kita gani bag palang do di nata kadala, di ba? Ay kabugat maniman. Or tagi po soon tado di nata kadala kabugat kisang heart ko. Go kabit di 159 pounds. Why was Hydalin Diaz able to do that? She started lifting weights when she was 11. How? panag She would walk 50 meters to get water. Okay? With two buckets of water at 11 years old, she started the training of lifting weights. And so when the opportunity came, it was easy for him. There, her, there was no struggle it came naturally to lift 88 kilos because she has been trained for it. In the same way, when we are living a disciplined life, righteous living is very easy. Less struggle to be good, to do what God wants because you have been doing that already. The second delight in the destination is that you live a very protected life. Our verse says, like a city whose walls are broken down is a man without self-control. And so it means that if you have self-control, if you have discipline, you're like a city with walls up. You're protected. You're not easily vulnerable to people who will fool you. Why? Because you can say no. Right? You've been doing that you know when to leave you know when this person does harm to you you say no so you live a very protected life also it protects your dream it protects your dream why is it sino sinyo ka tayo sa taya sa loto secret lang hindi pa ko manugid hindi ko mangayo wala to do you know that 70% of people who win in the lottery, according to research, become bankrupt after five years? They become bankrupt after five years because they do not have the capacity to take care of the money. Why? They've not been trained to take care of the money. They've not been trained to work for money. 